So as I get the Google Glass and study the world, I believe that we're shifting from an advertising-focused world to a commerce-focused world. What does that mean? I think we're going to see companies like this next one. We're going to see, like my, it's called My Time. It lets you order all sorts of businesses right from your uh, web browser. Think about what that means for the world, and we're going to discover it right now. Who are you? I'm Ethan Anderson, founder and CEO of My Time. Um, before starting My Time, I was a co-founder and CEO of Red Beacon, which was the TechCrunch 50 and Business Insider Startup 2010 winner. We uh, basically, what Red Beacon was in a nutshell, was we allowed you to get bids and price quotes from home service providers for jobs at your house, and it was eventually acquired by the Home Depot. Yeah. Before that, I was a product manager at Google. Of an MBA from Harvard Business School, and before that, I worked in uh, consulting and also as a director of strategy for Buy.com, an online retailer. Yeah, and, uh, congrats on uh, selling Red Beacon. Thank that's, you. That's got to be a big thrill. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It's it's really fun to kind of walk into a Home Depot store and see like the physical representation of Home Depot of Red Beacon in the Home Depot store. That's kind of a neat thing that I think a lot of startups who get acquired don't get to experience. No, it's it's really cool. I remember when you won uh, TechCrunch 50. It was pretty cool. This, though, is a, a, a little bit similar, sort of similar bent, but yeah, different. It's different. There yeah. were some things, I think, that we learned from Red Beacon that we thought, if we could do this again, you know, would we do anything differently? Or what were some of the kind of the big opportunities that we discovered in the process of building Red Beacon that could be actually transformed into a new company that, you know, is maybe actually an even better experience for some consumers? So, it, you know, I really think that we're heading into a new age. Uh, well, we're heading into an age of context with all these sensors and wearable computers and stuff like that. Right. Which is going to affect how we find things in our world. Yeah. But we're also, I think Google's signaling to the world that they're shifting from an advertising business to a commerce-based commerce. business. Mm -hmm. and that's really, you're, you're like it, one of the better startups I've seen in terms of, you know, ordering things yeah. from ordering businesses, a massage or a, a spa treatment or a... Sure, auto detailing, yeah. dental exam, almost anything. But you know, if you, I, I, like your, I like your thesis because when you think about the evolution of the advertising and internet industry, it started out something that was very non-pay for performance, like a, you know, a one-page subscription in the yellow pages for a year, right? Mm -hmm. And then it kind of moved to CPM-based advertising, like on Yahoo with banner ads. Then Google came around and CPC became the dominant form. With companies like lead generation type companies and Red Beacon, we tried to take it one step further and say, you only pay if we give you a qualified customer lead, not just for a click to your website. Yep. And I believe that my time, which we're about to talk about, is actually the final step in the progression, which is you can actually purchase and transact on our website and give the job to the business, and then we just keep a commission from that. It's yep. complete pay for performance. Yep. No, it, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, now that I have a glass on my eye, it, it really tells me that we're going to have a, a thing that we talk to. Now, whether it's a watch or just our old smartphone right. or a glass, right. I'm really wanting that world. I, it, it's giving me a little taste yeah. of this world where I'm going to just, hey, I need somebody to clean my house right now. I want to talk, and I want to tell it that, and I want it to happen. Sure. And you're close. Well, I just have to click on the maid over there. Or yeah, I, so, so what we're doing, if I can jump into it a little bit yeah. to, to kind of build on your point, is we are, I think, the first startup that is trying to connect to all the calendaring systems. And there's, by the way, there's hundreds of them. So it's a really ambitious project, and it takes a lot of engineering. But we're trying to plug into all the scheduling and calendaring systems that local businesses use. And so if we're successful, what we'll have is the one single source where you can have hundreds of thousands of business appointment openings yeah. right in one place. Now, it's incredibly valuable as a consumer destination, and we'll take a look at it in a minute. But it's also valuable, perhaps, as, you know, for partnerships. You can imagine someone like Google saying, you know, I, I uh, Googled Supercuts, and I want to see what appointments are available today. So you type in Supercuts, and it just shows appointment listings. Kind of like, you know, if you ever Googled a flight time, yep. and it will show you the flight time right there, yep. or weather, and it shows you the weather. Yep. Well, now you could say, these are open appointments. Or and Open Table is a great, it, this mm -hmm. is like Open Table. Open Table does this for restaurants. Right. You're doing it for all sorts of other yeah. services. Yeah. Now, it's a really interesting, we should talk about Open Table, because they took the approach of, let's put a piece of expensive hardware into every restaurant, and we become their scheduling system. Yep. My time took a different approach. We said, it's too much work, or it's too hard, or it'll take too long to try to put hardware into every single small business. 
Let's instead say build integrations into all the popular calendaring systems they're using today and just be agnostic about what they use, not try to replace them, and become a consumer destination or a source of open appointments for all the businesses. Yeah. Well, let's, let's see it just so people have a context of what we're talking about here. Yeah. So, right. so hey, we, I need a haircut, so what, okay. what can I do? Okay, so let's say you type in haircut, yeah. and you can see there's some different variations. So we'll say men's haircut here. Yeah. And so our first city that we launched in was Los Angeles. And so while we do have businesses in San Francisco, we have thousands of businesses in LA, so there's real okay. density there. We decided to do a rollout market by market strategy. No, that, that, that makes sense. And um, so what you'll see here are, I'm kind of switching into a gallery browse mode, is you'll see hundreds of different salons because we haven't done any filtering yet. So right now it's just using our own algorithm to decide which salons to show you. Yep. Um, now you could actually go in here and you could filter different, you know, your hair length. You could say, I'm only looking for an appointment, you know, for tomorrow and I have a certain price point in mind. So let me kind of restrict that to, you know, under $45. Yep. Okay, now what you're seeing is just the businesses that have those criteria. And there's still many, many businesses. Um, and you can look at them on a map if you like, because you know, we're still trying to learn which views people prefer. Uh, we know a lot of people like kind of seeing the different places. You, yep. know, you can click on it, say, oh, this is right near me. Um, you know, let's see. Oh, the Salon on Main is actually a pretty popular one here. You know, only $35 for a haircut, for a men's haircut. And notice here that it says 45 regular. This isn't group buying. You know, it's not like a Groupon or Living Social, but what it does do is it looks, because we're connected to their calendar, we have the notion of how busy they are. And yep. we know when their slow times are. And so what we do is we say, allow us to discount just the slow times. It's dynamic pricing. You know, kind of like what Uber would do yep. or an airline. Um, and the idea is that if that appointment time passes, it's worth zero dollars to them. Yep. Right? I mean, they'll, they'll never get that time back and they lost the opportunity to get a new customer. So they set a price floor, which they're in control of, and then you'll see like they have said apparently Tuesday and Wednesdays are slow days for them. So look here, like on Thursday it's always $45, but on Wednesday there are some $35 times during their slowest periods. And so if you were someone who could take advantage of their slow period and you had a little flexibility in your schedule, you could save, you know, whatever this is, um, you know, 15 bucks. or 20%, yeah, yep. 10 bucks, um, and go in. And now what I've done is I've added it to the shopping cart. So this should be very familiar to anybody who has ever purchased online. It's very yep. much like Amazon or Fab or One Kings Lane. Um, it's in the shopping cart. And you can actually book an individual hairstylist at the salon. So, you know, we actually have the notion of individual employees, their calendars, their bios, because we know that if you're gonna go back to a place you've been before, you care about who you're seeing. So we've, had to, we've built all of that in. Yep. Um, and um, you know, information about the business, photos of them. And then you see up here, like you can actually see some different variations. And this yep. may change the price. If you have shoulder length hair, it might be a different price. So we've had to add the variations that the business uses to determine how much to charge you. Yeah, if you're doing auto detailing, if you <laughs> try to get an RV cleaned, Absolutely. it's gonna be a different price than if you have a smart car clean. And, right? and, and, that's, and that is one of the variations that we have, is yeah. small car versus RV versus SUV. Absolutely, because that changes the price. It actually changes the appointment duration too. And we need to know the appointment duration because we're booking it onto their calendar. The calendars are synced, right? So this was, in terms of building the business, it was a tremendous amount of upfront work. In fact, it was Absolutely. over a year year and a half of effort just collecting this data, talking to the businesses, getting their prices, their variations, their availability, and building the calendar. How big is your team so far on this? So the team right now is about 17 people, yeah. um, made up of four engineers, a designer, and then the rest is all sales and marketing, yep. kind of support and customer service to support you know, the thousands of merchants that we have. Yep. Now, everybody I'm seeing here, you actually went to and had a chat with them and got them in the database. Every single one of them. Okay. But it is. I so it's not this. algorithmic. It do, you can't just uh, spider everybody's website and get this information. Right? No, because okay. they need to connect you to their calendaring system and they have to give you permission to take money on their behalf because yep. we're the merchant of record. Just like Amazon, if you buy an HP printer, it's Amazon that's charging your credit card, not HP, right? Yeah. So we collect the payment, your credit card's on file, and then we pay the business on the day of the appointment. So this is um, not rocket science. It takes a lot of 
execution work. It's a lot of execution work. Right. Yeah, you know, it's if you don't have the I, sales people, if you don't have the marketing team, you you're not going to be able to do this. Not because the code is complex, but because right. the execution. There's a lot of execution risk. That's right. And so I've had to learn as a CEO to build a great sales team. And even with Red Beacon, it wasn't as necessary to have a really you know powerful sales organization. Because Red Beacon, we had to get you like three or four price quotes, right? And yeah. so it wasn't that hard to get that. You know, we could just throw it out to Craigslist or we could throw it out to you know, Yelp or something like that and then businesses would start bidding. With this, we actually have, we track every metric. You know, it's like how many calls are made, yeah. how many decision makers are reached and pitched, how many of those businesses signed up, um, are those businesses you know, dynamically pricing, are they connecting their calendars, and all these are metrics that are up on a big screen in the sales yeah. room, tracked in Salesforce. And um, you know we have an incredibly efficient operation right now. Yeah. Now, if I was uh, if I was smart, mm -hmm. I'd copy this and take it to New York before you could get to New York, right? You you could try. <laughs> I can tell you, this business is not easy to build. You need a, a seriously strong sales team. There's more technology under the hood than you think, yeah. because there's over a dozen. But certainly, founders. like the Samwer brothers in Germany do this. You know, yeah. they've done that before to other businesses. In San Francisco. Well, if so. you think about, take Groupon, because remember they, they yeah. created, they did a Groupon clone? Yeah. That was an easy business to copy because what do you need? One deal a day from one business in the whole city, at least in the beginning, you know, with no, no integrations whatsoever, just an agreement to take 50% of the revenue. Yeah. This is integrations into dozens of calendars, you know, getting, loading up all of the data of the services they provide, their employees, the prices, right? you know, getting a profile that they approve and getting up there. I yeah. mean, they're essentially saying, my time, you can be our retailer. Yeah. We have the product that we sell, but you can retail it for us. And you can be the one-stop yeah. shop destination and attract thousands of consumers to your website um, and sell things for us and fill our open appointments. Yeah. And even the dynamic pricing, it's not total rocket science, but it's not easy either. Like we have to analyze their calendars. We have to decide what you know, we want to maximize the revenue, right? But we don't want to let the appointment time go unfilled. So there's a lot of learning and training of the model that has to happen there too. I bet uh, you're showing this to me on a web browser. I bet there's a nice mobile client coming out. Or yeah, so there's, that... there's wonderful iPhone apps. And let me give you a little preview of what that will look like. So I have this area called My Favorites. And I think the mobile experience will be very centered around the My Favorites. And you can see here that some of my favorite businesses um, are in this area. Yep. And if I've ever booked a business on my time, it shows up here automatically. If uh, I come through the business's website to my time because they put links and buttons to our website, it'll get added. Um, and you can also favorite them manually by clicking on the heart button. Yep. The great thing about my favorites is, one, it reminds you when to get the service done. No more remembering when do I need to get a dental exam, when do I need to get an auto detailing, when should I clean my carpets. All this stuff just gets automatically set. You know, based on recommendations, which you can, of course, override. And it gets put on your Google Calendar? or Yeah. Uh, it, so that's actually coming soon, is okay. an integration to Google Calendar. That'll be so cool, because then it will say, you're overdue for a dental exam. Yep. We looked at your Google Calendar. We also looked at the dentist calendar. We found an overlapping time, and it's, it's time for you to get it done. Here are three choices. Why don't you choose one of these that will work for both of you? That would be so like awesome. Like one click. That would be so awesome, particularly on mobile, because... A lot of times I'm, when I'm doing this kind of thinking like, oh, I need a haircut, I'm actually walking around with my mobile with phone. phone or my Google Glass. Absolutely. I, this is where I want this kind of thing. Plus, a lot of it's serendipity. You know, you come up to me and go, man, I just had the best spa treatment or the best back rub or whatever. It's yeah. like, oh, where was that? So, and so <laughs> oh, that's, I was at the Ritz. So just to give you a preview, because this, this favorites area is brand new. It's just a week yeah. old. The next version of it, which is coming very soon, will be social. Yeah. And so I can go to Robert Scoble's page and I can see the businesses that you recommend and that you like. Because let's say I am looking for a massage and you have said there's this great place. Wouldn't it be awesome if I could just go to your page and choose the person that you use that's in your favorites? And yeah. by the way, you'll get $10. You know, yeah. We'll just kick in $10 for you if some, one of your friends books. Yeah. We'll give you a $10 credit. Massage is a little bit weird, but Maybe auto detail is a great example. I'm driving into work here in San, I live, uh, I work here in San Francisco. I live in Half Moon Bay. In Half Moon Bay, we don't have good car washes. In San Francisco, they have great car washes. 
but it takes an hour and a half to go to the car wash. Right. So why couldn't somebody come out to my work, pick up my keys, take my car, and detail yeah. my car? I'd, I'd pay so, a nice premium for that, right? And we do segment the businesses from those that come to you and yeah. those you go to them. But, so you, yeah. but the impulse is on the way here. Yeah. <laughs> on the way here, it's like, damn, I need, I'm going on a date tonight. I need my car clean. <laughs> and so well, and I forgot to do that. And, and so that's my another impulse use case. To push How about money. this? Yeah. You can say with the mobile app that's coming, I need an oil change. I just remembered. Who is around me within a one mile radius that has an opening right this moment? Yeah. It pulls them all up. Everybody on the site is four or five star rated, so you don't have to worry too much about quality. Yeah. You see their prices and you select the one you want, click, purchased, and booked, and you just show up and they're waiting for you. Yeah. This is where I, I've been giving advice to businesses. I, I say, look at Uber and understand what happened with Uber. Understanding where the inventory is, understanding where your customer demand is, right. and understanding uh, all that, and seeing it on a mobile phone is key. So you're taking all, a lot of these businesses a long way that to that. We are, and it's and we've had it's been a little bit of like leading a horse to water, yeah. where we've had to talk to them about the value yeah. of having a web presence. Sometimes we've had to get them from pen and paper to calendars. So you know, there's a little bit of a first mover disadvantage in a sense, you know, because we have to deal with all of that. Yeah. But on the other hand, I believe that as we're starting to build up our density, and right now we have about a million appointments every month on the site, um, you start to become undisplaceable. Yeah. Because businesses don't want to do this twice. No. And our churn rate is less than one percent. So once they sign up, they kind of tend to stay signed up. Yeah. And so you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a land grab, and it's going to take some time because there's a lot of cities and millions of businesses. But look, we're in this for the long term, and we want this to be the Amazon I mean, of local services. And the, the other thing I'm noticing in business, and I, I've talked to Andreessen about it and other, other I, I talked to uh, ski resorts about it and the people at the Ritz-Carlton. Um, today they don't know much about their customer. Right. I, I've been to the Ritz and have, I live by the Ritz, and I've been there 240 times according to Foursquare, right? When I walk in, do they know anything about me? No. No. When I go to the Ritz in London, do they know anything about me? Absolutely not. I'm trying, you know, no. Sure. They don't even know my favorite drink. Right. Now, the guy, the bartender at the Ritz and where he, I go. He knows. He you. knows, <laughs> you know, because, you know, I tip well and, and I buy expensive scotch every right. time I'm there. Okay. It's like, sure. It's pretty consistent, you know, and people are creatures of habit. So if you get to know somebody. But he should be feeding that in a database somewhere. So when I go to London, they go, hey, Robert Scull's here. Yeah. Like, Come on so over. the notion of personalization. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, so are you do, are you thinking about that for these businesses that you're going to start bringing in any of the clout score or or f Facebook information or yeah. if you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter or Google Plus or well let me there? let me start in the let me just start even one step before that yeah. we share the customer's information with the business that's actually kind of radical like Groupon Living Social they don't actually share the information they say this is our customer they just happen to buy a voucher for your business you don't yeah. get to know who they are. We say, that's total BS. This is their customer. Just because they bought the service on our website, it's absolutely their customer. Yeah. So they have a full dashboard of the customers that have been there, the last visit, what they bought, and it's all shared with the business. Now, what I'm hoping is that over the longer term is trust Email is built. address and phone number. And Email everything. and phone, all shared. Yeah. I'm hoping that as trust is built and we start to give them lots and lots of new customer bookings, that they start to trust us to re-engage their existing customer base, that they give us access over time you know, it's earned trust, and we're allowed to remarket to their existing customers, let them know that they're overdue, let them know about special promotions, yeah. and all of that can be booked through my time. Now, my, my dentist uses a system not unlike yours, but, but it's not a marketplace like this. Uh, it reminds me on text that my appointment's tomorrow. You know, does, does your system do yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So we remind you when it's time to get an appointment. We remind yeah. you your appointment is coming up. You can manage all of your appointments right here. Yeah. Um, coming very soon, you'll be able to reschedule and cancel them. That's a yeah. you know, feature that we're working on. And you'll also be able to rate and review the business. But here's something that's interesting. There's no faking. There's no gaming the reviews. You can only review a business that you've purchased on my time. So you can't have like your competitor come in and like kind of downgrade you, or yeah. your friends come in and write a bunch of fake positive reviews. It's all it's gonna be very high integrity. That's cool. So you're gonna yeah. you're gonna be building an information system along with it for both the consumer and the business, which is 
sure. going to be pretty, put you in a pretty good place. It's gonna be, we're going to be in a good place. <laughs> I, I, I'm really excited. I think there's going to be phenomenal partnerships. I think this. How long is it uh, before Google's going to buy you? <laughs> right? Because this is going to be threatening to Google in a whole, whole raft of ways. I think Google will find this really interesting. I think that Google yeah. will say, look, this is great data. I mean, what, what is yeah. Google but like a giant you know, data aggregator? You know, they do interesting things with their data. Um, this will be a great Android app. This will be phenomenal if it's ever integrated into Google Web Search, right? Yeah. You'll be able to see prices, availability, services offered for businesses, and it's like super high integrity because the businesses themselves manage the information from their dashboard right And now. everything in your database, you, you're, you're thinking of semantic web already. I can sort of see mm -hmm. that you're thinking of how would, how would a, uh, another system a system use your APIs to do things with this and help you Sure, get so I can, yeah. you know, okay, let me actually go in a different direction then. So I'm going to open up and show you, for example, how another system can use us. So we have different partners and we're working on some really big name ones right now. But um, you might want to say, I'm looking for a nail salon on a website like Sensi, yeah. which is a, you know, another startup in New York. And what, what Sensi has done is they have said, um, actually, let me switch this location to Los Angeles. We, they, they have a feed of my time businesses, availability yep. and pricing. And what can happen now is you can actually go and book and purchase the manicure in this case, right on my time through the Sensi system. And that's actually like a cool. really cool Yep. thing. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the future because I, I, I was at SRI and they, they SRI is the lab that brought Nuance and Siri right. uh, voice. They're building a, um, systems that you're just going to talk to, you know, and, and it won't have a UI that looks anything like this. It'll look like a chat room. Uh, to you as you talk to it, either in the glass or on your phone. Oh, sort of like Siri, right? Well, I, Siri I thought was about a good that example. too. There, there's a company that uh, we have a meeting with coming up very soon that does intelligent, uh, ne uh, like kind of the OEM car navigation products. Yep. Like for example, I don't know if you've seen Audi or BMW. They're very sophisticated computers. You know, they do all kinds of things. They're connected to the internet now. They have SIM cards yep. built in, and so your Audi could say, "I'm low. I, it's time for an oil change." And it could say, would you like me to book you an appointment at a nearby shop? And then find, a, using my time, find open appointments and prices and then let the driver select one. Yep, yep, absolutely. I, 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 you're thinking along the same right, lines yeah. I am. Um, and you so what else do we need to know about this? I, it's, it, to me, it's fairly straightforward. It's really cool. It's going to be very useful. Yeah, uh, I think that the, I think, you know, some of the other things to kind of notice When are, is it coming to other cities? I think that's right, the real key. I know. <laughs> you know, I'm in San Francisco. Very and happening soon. Day. You know, we've had just awesome, awesome kind of pickup in Los Angeles. Like, it seems like the media is excited about it. Consumers are excited. The businesses seem to be, you know, we're yeah. signing up thousands of businesses every few months. So well, it's growing it, quickly. Los Angeles is a, a, is a big strip 15 mall. 15 million right? people. But it's 15 million people, but it's a huge strip mall. And there's yeah. a lot of businesses all over the place and it's all a car based society. So this, I can understand why this is going to be big. New York, for instance, is a walking community. Uh, you, you, a lot of people, my friends don't even own cars. They either take the subway somewhere or they walk. And so it, the, the choices will be uh, more constrained, but there's more density. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how so it works in New York. One of the things that we've learned about Los Angeles, Angeles is that we have to have merchants in every neighborhood. Yeah. It's not enough just to have 50 hair salons. You actually yeah. have to have hair salons in every place that a person lives because no one's willing to drive five miles because yep. they don't want to sit in traffic. Yep. So I think that's a big learning for us. Now when we think about our sales strategy, we actually look at it on a neighborhood by neighborhood level. Yeah. And because we have about 60 categories of services, we actually have, it's a pretty I mean, New York is probably a five block. Yeah. You know, five block that way, five block In Kansas this City, way. it's probably like a 20 mile radius. You know, people yeah. are willing to drive further, I'm sure, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, In Half Moon Bay, it's 45 minutes everywhere. <laughs> so. One other cool thing to know about my time, which yeah. isn't going to be obvious from just looking at it, is because we're deeply integrated into so many different platforms, we'll actually advertise the open appointments across Google AdWords, Facebook ads, Twitter ads. And we'll intelligently say there's an open appointment for this business, and we'll start pushing geo-targeted ads to that uh, different platform. Well, that's interesting. If I'm getting a haircut, let's say in San Mateo, right? 
you probably will know the other businesses really close to that and you'll see that I have an open another open hour sure could you bring me other businesses and try to upsell me we and can. say hey after your haircut why don't you go to Togo's for lunch or something yeah like that? you can do that or you could say why don't you not you but why don't you go get a waxing or it's actually one of our most popular services maybe I like to be waxed well <laughs> there is a man waxing here. <laughs> yes. It's funny the things you have to learn as you do a startup like this. Yeah, yeah. I, I've learned a lot about the different variations of waxing, as it turns out. But um, but no, but that's but that's actually a very good point because it might be you're just trying to get a bunch of things checked off your list, and my yeah. time becomes your concierge, and it says I want a chiropractor appointment, a massage, and a haircut, and I have an afternoon free. Let me just see who's all available right in that area, and just take care of everything. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, you're off to the races, man. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so you have a small team growing fast. Yeah, are so you we have hiring a small a lot of team. We have, yeah, of course, we're the usual. We're hiring Ruby on Rails engineers, um, more salespeople. Yeah. yeah, but our team is pretty good strength right now. It's about what, 18, what's the next 17, market? 17, 18 people. If you're looking for salespeople, are you looking for them in c certain markets? We're, we're actually centralizing them all in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, and you know, at least for now, at some point it won't scale anymore. But we like for them just to be in the office. They give us great feedback from the customers. They're kind of our eyes and ears on the ground, so to speak. Yeah. Um, we like to kind of monitor their own progress and success because we're still constantly iterating and the product is changing. And because it's a startup, they contribute about 20% of their time to doing research on the product, to doing QA on the product. They're not just doing sales. Like they're part of the, the overall product development effort as well. No, that's really cool. How are you guys funded? Yeah, so Mark Suster uh, in Los Angeles yep. led the Series A, uh, or seed round, I guess, because it was just a PowerPoint at that point. And uh, we were funded with $3 million from, from Mark Suster and GRP Partners, from 500 startups, yep. uh, David Tisch's The Box Group, yep. and um, a couple of other great entrepreneurs in the Valley, like Brian Lee from Shoe Dazzle, Ben Smith, who started Merchant Circle, uh, Jason Calacanis. So some really great kind of uh, angel investors who've been really helpful. Very cool. It's yeah. uh, well thought out. So yeah, I understand why all the smart people are in, in, in on the game. It's an ambitious vision, but somebody's got to do it. So we get it at mytime.com? Mytime.com. Yep. Check it out. Very cool. Thanks for coming in. Great. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.